Liberal MP Nate Erskine-Smith is the first person to declare his intention to run for the Ontario Liberal leadership race. And he joins us live now on CP24 with more of his vision for the party. Nate, thanks so much for joining us. So this is a big day for you, officially entering uh, the Ontario Liberal leadership race. Tell us why you're the guy to take the helm, to turn things around and stand out as different. I got involved in politics 10 years ago at the federal level because we were in desperate need of generational renewal at the federal level. Our party was in third place. We were really frustrating conservative majority government. And all of the parallels apply at the provincial level right now. And the difference is I have a track record of working across party lines, helping to shape the government's agenda successfully. I have a track record of political organization. I have a track record of doing politics differently, of speaking my mind, of holding myself, I think, with integrity as, as far as it goes. And so there's a huge opportunity, I think, mm -hmm. to deliver a message to say, politics for all of its faults, and you and I both know there are faults to mm -hmm. politics, it's the most important way to make a difference in the lives of others. And if you want better out of politics, which I do, the answer is participation. Yeah, and speaking of those party lines, uh, since October you've been traveling to 50 different ridings across the country. Yeah. What have you been hearing uh, from people? Are, are there major concerns right now? It's interesting because there are obviously unique issues in different regions. Transportation and accessibility is particularly acute and unique in Northern Ontario, and I've traveled all across Northern Ontario. Having said that, what has struck me is how common the issues are in every region across the province. Two million people don't have access to a family doctor. Mm -hmm. Mental health and addictions supports are, are underserved. Seniors and community care is inaccessible. You look at housing affordability. Young people are being driven out of our communities and out of our province. It's not only a generational fairness challenge, it is a productivity challenge for our province. You, you look at environmental protections and climate action today means good jobs and we need governments that lean into that conversation and create jobs. I was in St. Thomas just last week where we are creating jobs because of federal leadership, not because of provincial leadership. And we need mm. that same leadership at the provincial level. Mm -hmm. And you know, turning to the Ontario Liberal Party right now, uh, two kind of disastrous losses uh, in 2022 on June 2nd uh, that kind of beat the, the last election. Do you think that you can turn the party around and, I don't know, kind of beat uh, the Ford government? The Ford government, look, there are lots of reasons and to, right. to want better out of our politics. You look at the incompetence on health care, the incompetence on housing. You look at the lack of compassion to education workers, the lack of compassion to those who are in desperate need of more accessible social services. You look at the lack of integrity when it comes to the backroom deal to sell off the green belt. I'm going to be clear, I'm going to protect the green belt, but then they did the very opposite. You, you run down the list and there's so many reasons to demand and, and deserve better. I think at the same time, we can't just be the not Doug Ford party. Mm -hmm. As a liberal party, we've got to stand for the values of confidence, compassion, and integrity. We've got to have a strong economic agenda, fiscal discipline matched with fairness for those in need, and all deliver with honesty and integrity. And if we deliver on those values, deliver on the big picture issues that we've discussed, and at the same time bring positive politics and the sense of generational, serious, thoughtful renewal, I think we're going to be very successful. Mm -hmm. Nate, you're a, a young f a father of two boys, a lawyer by trade, and you know you say that you're not afraid to speak your mind. Uh, not afraid to speak your mind, even to the own your own like Liberal Party. Give us an example of what you've said before that's kind of been opposed to what the dominant clan has said. So I have early on pushed the government in many ways to treat drug use as a health issue to save lives in the opioid crisis. The government wasn't where it needed to be. And over time, it's gotten much closer to where we need to be. And that was as a result of pushing and helping to shape the, the, the government's agenda. I've also been more disagreeable at times. When we broke the promise on electoral reform, I stood up and mm -hmm. actually wrote an op-ed that probably made me no friends in my caucus at the time. <laughs> but uh, to say we shouldn't have done that, democratic reform matters a great deal to me. Trust in politics matters a great deal to me. When we make a promise, we should honor that promise. And. So, that's one of the, the examples, but there are many. And, and I would say, overwhelmingly, what we want out of our politics is, and what I want out of our politics as I look at building a team, is really strong voices for communities. And any leader should be empowering those voices to speak on behalf of their communities. And, mm -hmm. and that's what makes our politics the best, that sense of reasonable disagreement and empowering parliamentarians but to really empower the communities that they serve. Right, and that's kind of, you know, where your law comes in because you're just one cog in the justice system that's trying to balance it all. Uh, Nate Erskine-Smith, really appreciate you coming in to chat with us today, and I'm sure we'll be speaking with you again in the future. Take I hope, care. Yeah, I hope so. Thanks very much. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you.